This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Now then, I did one of these videos last year, I may have even done two of them, and the reception on this was excellent and everybody has been asking me for these videos this year. But I would like to talk about today a small selection of plants that I honestly believe are good investments to make. So basically, if you were to buy a given plant, how long would it be till you made a return on your purchase price if you were to take cuttings of it, propagate it, and sell it on in bits? So how do we define a good investment? Well, I've come up with a few bullet points that really define find a few factors that I think are important. The first one, of course, is the price. This is the buy it in price. So this is the price that you will pay for the plant initially to acquire said plant. The second factor is the availability. So how easy is it to get? The third factor is the ease or success of propagation. So how easy is it to take cuttings? Will it do fine? Will it die? It all makes a difference when thinking about whether something is a worthy investment. Similarly, the time in between propagations. Does the plant take two months to become propagatable again or does it take six months? Believe me, there are plants out there that take six months and beyond. We're also going to talk about whether the market trend for the plant is currently up, down or stable. So which way is it moving through the market? Finally, I will be talking about whether the plant is a good investment. Heads up, obviously everything in this list is a good investment, but I'll probably get into specifics a little bit. I would honestly consider every plant on this list a good investment. And next week you will see the plants that I think are bad investments. So if you don't want to miss that, feel free to check out my channel and subscribe if you're not already. That way you won't miss it. So if you're new to my channel, you're probably thinking, who the hell are you? and why are you telling us what is a good investment and what isn't? How on earth do you know? And that's a fair question. So I am the proud owner of the Rare Plant Shop, which is home to, I mean, I haven't counted recently, but it's at least 7,000 aroids. And usually when I look after a given plant, I'm looking after between 10 or maybe 200 of one given plant at one time. I've got very good experience selling things. I've got very good experience in watching market trends, buying plants in at the right time, selling them, potentially the right time, potentially the wrong time and all the rest. I can spot prices going up, prices going down and what I personally believe will make a good selling houseplant. That said, everything in this video is based on my opinion. Please take that with a pinch of salt and feel free to disagree with me. That is entirely your choice. Right, let's get into this. So certain plants I have here with me today, they are on the floor right now. Some of them I only have photographs. This could be because I don't own the plant. It could be because I just wasn't able to pull it off a shelf at the shop. It could be a few reasons. So you will see a little blend of plants today. I just want to say before we get into the video that I am aware that not everyone buys a houseplant simply to make money from. People do buy them to enjoy them, of course. That said, I do think that considering investment wisely is very important, as a lot of the time these plants are not cheap. It doesn't hurt to think of the longevity of the plant from a financial perspective. That way you can still indulge in the hobby whilst potentially making some money on the side. So the first good investment plant I have on my list today is none other than the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now this is a little bit of a surprise. It might be a surprise to some. Basic backstory here, a lot of people last year for certain, some in 2020 as well, held off on buying this plant. Now obviously people hold off on buying plants for many different reasons, but I think it'd be fair to say that a lot of the reasoning was due to the cost of farms debacle. So if you don't know, cost of farms came out in, I believe, 2020, possibly even 2019, basically saying, yo, hey, See this Thai constellation, we're going to mass produce it and we're going to make it really affordable. Shock horror, that didn't come to fruition. Without getting into it, basically what happened was Costa Farms sold off a small number of mother plants that they still had, I believe, early this year for around about $600. So not really affordable. The current situation that has followed on from this is basically what you might expect. So a lot of people rejoiced when this happened because everyone was like, hey, we have ties, we can put the prices back up. And in a lot of cases that has happened. So I would say this is a big surprise investment plant that I don't think we were really expecting. 
Now, the price for the Monstera Tycon Solution. So, depending on size, this could set you back between low three figures and mid three figures. So, for example, $100 to, say, $400. The availability is pretty average. You can probably find someone selling one if you want one. This would be on eBay, Facebook, maybe some plant shops, etc. Ease or success of propagation, in my experience, it is very much hit and miss. They do like to inexplicably rot, and it's not awesome when that happens. I've had entire batches of propagations wiped out in one go, just because they decided to randomly rot. They're not too difficult, I don't want to frighten anyone, but they have been known to be a little bit finicky. I suspect Costa Farms encountered this at some point. Time between propagation, I would say per plant, perhaps three months. Obviously, the one thing you do have in its favour here is that the variegation on the Thai constellation is stable, i.e. those lovely little white bits will not go away, they will not revert. They are part of the plant. So that's a nice little bonus if you're worried about stuff like that. Ease of care, very easy, just don't underfeed. Do not underfeed, keep them well fed and they should be absolutely fine. They should size up pretty easy. As for the market trend, it probably is the same as what it was, if not a slight upturn due to cost of farms. But of course, even way back then, they were still desirable. So in my opinion, the Monstera Thai Constellation has always been desirable. There is a slight increase. Who knows how long it will last, but I don't think you're going to lose out on investing. So is it worth investing? Yes, of course. This is a video about good investments. I think for the price point, this is a very nice one. It's a little bit more accessible for a lot of people. If you are looking to invest in something more expensive though, then there are more on this list that might be better suited for you. The next plant I would like to put forth as a good investment is the Monstera Mint. Now, essentially, if you don't know what this is, of course, there will be a picture on the screen. This plant is basically a variegated Monstera that has two layers of variegation instead of three. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically, really quick rundown, to get super white variegation in a Monstera deliciosa, there are three potential layers of variegation that can form in the leaf. If you get one layer, you get kind of a lime greeny colour. If you get two layers, you get a minty sort of green, frosted sort of green colour. And then if you get three, you get that beautiful lily white colour. So this Monstera that you see is essentially a Monstera that never broke that third layer of variegation. Now, I did a little bit of digging on this yesterday, and I seemed to find two different sources of this plant. One appeared to be small form Monstera, yes there is a difference, and one appeared to be large form Monstera. So as of doing this video now, I can't actually concrete tell you if there is more than one source and if it is large or small. So if you have the answer to that, feel free to write a comment below so that maybe someone might find that useful. Personally, I don't think that's integral to whether or not you would make money from this plant. I'm just kind of mentioning it as an FYI. I must say though that so many listings for this plant are not the real deal. Trust me, there are tons. There are a lot of people selling mint Monstera and it doesn't even look mint. I don't even know how people are getting away with that personally. A mint Monstera has only broken through two layers of variegation to make it frosted green. There are so many Monsteras on the internet that are using pictures of that lily white with a little bit of green here and there, a little bit of that frosted color. So please, 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 if you wanna purchase this plant, do get a second opinion or go to the actual source of the plant. There is only one, potentially two anyway. So be very, very careful. So the price tag on a Monstera Mint is unfortunately high four digits. Yes, high four digits. But price will vary based on the variegation presented to you. So of course it will depend cutting to cutting, but that's generally the region this plant is. This is not one for the week. Availability, I'm not actually sure on this one. There may be a waiting list. I'm not entirely sure as I think there are only a couple of legitimate sources. So you might need to go straight to the source for that one. Ease or success of propagation, personally, I've never owned this plant. However, going off Monstera Deliciosa or variegated Monstera, they're probably going to propagate reasonably easy. Just make sure there is an aerial route. That is my top tip for propagation on anything, and I will probably repeat this a million times, but make sure there is an aerial route when you propagate. 
Time between propagation, assuming it is the same as the Monstera Albor, per plant perhaps three months, something like that. Ease of care, I would say pretty easy. Gonna go out on a limb, of course I don't fully know, but it's a good guess. Just do not let those leaves burn, otherwise if you're going to sell this plant, it's probably gonna devalue the cutting. As for the market trend going up or down, I would actually call this one stable. And I think that is just because there are only a couple of genuine ones and they aren't being leaked very fast due to the fact there are only obviously a couple of mother plants. Is it worth investing though? Well, honestly, if you have the cash, I would say it was a good investment. Supply is so low, I don't think anybody is going to sell these things out from underneath you. I think you'll be absolutely fine. Of course, though, they are very expensive. So if that's out of your budget, keep watching, there are others that will fall way below this price tag. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's so quick and easy to edit any one of these templates and make it your own. I don't know if you guys know this, but my website for the Red Plant Shop is actually built from one of these templates. While designing and editing my website, Squarespace allows me to preview what the finished edit looks like on different devices. And this is a really cool feature because what works for a web browser on a laptop doesn't always work for a smartphone. This way I can toggle between different previews and check to make sure my design looks great no matter what device I'm viewing it on. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover Kaylee, back to the video. The next plant on my list is a personal favourite for sure. This was a wishlist plant for me for a long, long time, maybe about two to three years, was it not? This is the Philodendron Whipple Way. It's very, very cute. And this one looks very cute as well. If you're very curious, by the way, why these are wrapped, I should have mentioned it before. These plants are in Lekka and they've come from my shop. Normally they would be stood in water. I didn't want them to dry out, so I pulled them straight out of the water. I put them in a little baggie and I wrapped it. So that's why they look like that. I'm just trying to protect them. There are rumours that this plant is a type of philodendron domesticum. I don't know how true that is. Again, if you do know, please let me know. I meant to look it up actually, but I completely forgot for this video. But I just want to mainly tell you very quickly about the journey of this plant. So as you may be able to see on camera, this is the newest leaf here. Leaves come in a really beautiful strawberry milkshake type color. They then descend into this sort of strawberry cream color, so a little bit more cream. They then become even more cream than that. They then turn into this frosted green here. That's not a faded green, that is genuinely just a frosted green. And then eventually they will go to full green. Very, very beautiful plants. Love them. Just love them. I just think this is so gorgeous, especially when it won't revert. How good is that? It's so cute. One other thing before we continue, a lot of people are saying these are chemically induced. That is false. That is not the case. This plant just happens to grow this way and it always will. Light levels do sort of influence that, so bump your light, but 100% real, not chemically induced. So the price on a philodendron whipple way, I have it at around low four digits for a one leaf cutting. So upwards of $1,000, maybe even one and a half thousand dollars for a single leafed cutting. You would of course be paying more for full plant. Full plants are pretty difficult to come by though. So if you wanted a full plant, you're really going to have to do some digging. Availability, honestly, they're still very limited at the moment. This plant is in its infancy in terms of its market life cycle. They're slowly starting to be propagated by the people that own them and you could probably find one if you post in a large Facebook group but they're very purchasable so you may have a little bit of competition there. Ease or success of propagation I would say personally pretty easy. They do climb so they do have aerials and they grow at an average rate. Not really fast, not really slow, just straight down the middle. I've never personally lost a propagation, but of course, it does depend on your methods. Time between propagation, they do slow down when they're chopped, so it's possible you may need to wait upwards of five months. Ease of care, however, is pretty easy. Just make sure you keep those light levels up in order to keep the pretty colors coming in and ensuring that they're still desirable to buyers when you sell them on. Because if people want to buy one of these plants, they're going to want to know it's real and they're going to want to see those colors. 
The market trend, as you might expect, is of course going up. As I mentioned, the market life cycle of this plant is still very much in its infancy, so there is plenty of time for this plant to take over yet. This is early days. Therefore, do I think it's worth investing in? Yes, of course I do. And it is for this reason, basically. Plus, the plant is stable, so you don't need to worry about reversion like some others on this list. Those beautiful colours, that is just inherent to how the plant is. So you're not gambling in that way, at least. Next up, we have the Philodendron El Choco Red. Very, very, very surprising to see this plant in this list. Now, I actually call this plant an all-rounder. I have done for a while. I've featured it in a lot of easy houseplant videos and stuff like that. While it might look not very easy, it is honestly one of the easy ones. But I call it an all-rounder because honestly, it's dark, it's velvet, it's heart-shaped, it has red backs on the leaves, and it's pretty easy care. That's why I call it an all-rounder. Most of the things that this plant displays is something that most people want when they look for a heart-shaped philodendron. I think this plant just has it. It's so beautiful, is it not? This one's obviously only Diddy, but it's so cute. And look at the back, look at the back. Look at that, oh. So the price on a philodendron choco red is around about low three digits for a one leaf cutting or a small plant. It really can vary. It depends on the seller. It depends where it is. You might find it slightly cheaper if you get lucky. Now, the availability on these is surprisingly really low. I know that a lot of wholesalers offering this plant are not offering decent quality specimens, which doesn't really help, to be honest. I don't see many people selling this plant either. I don't know what happened. As for the ease or success of propagation, I would not say this plant was easy to propagate, personally, at least for me anyway. Now, they are climbers, but they aren't very forthcoming with aerial roots. So if you cut the plant without any aerial roots, your chances of success are pretty low. I've lost a ton of cuttings this way. I'd avoid these plants if your environment doesn't encourage aerial roots on your philodendron. It's probably not a headache that you need for your investment. Time between propagations, I would guess perhaps around four months. It depends, of course, on feeding and your environment, just like with any plant on this list. Now, ease of care, if it's an established plant, ease of care is very, very easy. It's nothing like when you're propagating, it turns into a super easy plant. As I mentioned earlier, if it's nurturing a propagation, it can be hit or miss. But if it's an established plant, you should not have any problems at all. I would describe the market trend for these plants as stable due to the fact that the market has never been anywhere near flooded. These plants are still a viable option for investment, which does actually surprise me. I really thought this plant would have gone in a different direction to what it has. Is it worth investing? Of course it is. If you can get good quality initial stock and good aerials, I think you stand to make a cute little income from this plant. So this very small, very cute plant I would like to talk about next for a good investment is the Thingonium Chiapensi Variegated. I think that's how you say it. This plant fascinates me a little bit because honestly, it doesn't look like a typical Syngonium. It looks kind of like an Anthurium, kind of like a Philodendron. Like it just looks a bit different, right? It's not what you think of when you think of a typical Syngonium. It's very, very pretty. And the leaves are sort of rubbery, sort of, and they're not super thin either. So this plant tends to be a little bit on the tougher side. As you can probably tell from this video, this is an original leaf that it was shipped with, so it has suffered a little bit of damage. It has been fed since, but this has remained, and honestly, it's just going to keep remaining. New leaves will probably be fine when they go through. This is a one-leaf cutting that's come out of my shop. It's not ready yet, of course, but this is probably a bit permanent. So if you're getting one of these in, this may happen. It's just one of those things. But luckily the variegation didn't burn on the way in because that can happen when you ship them. All in all, very cute little plant. Absolutely in love with it. Very new on the scene as well. So the price for the Syngonium is actually low for figures for a single leaf. A single leaf with good variegation might set you back as much as $1,000. Obviously, one with less variegation could be potentially cheaper. Do think about that when you're investing, though. Availability is very, very low. You're probably going to struggle to pick one of these up. I do not often see these offered online. The ease or success of propagation. I do have limited experience with these plants, but they seem easy enough, and I have nothing no worthy to tell you, so I have no caveats for you at the moment. Time between propagations, I would say around about three months, so middle of the road, pretty good I would say. 
ease of care. They're easy enough. Just make sure you have good humidity, which would be, I don't know, a minimum of 50% and feed them very well. They do seem to be quite hungry plants in my experience. They can lose that dark green color and they can bleach up a little bit if you do not give them what they need. As for the market trend, they are definitely going up and I think it's going to continue to go up for quite a while. This is another plant that is very much in its infancy. Is it worth investing? Of course, you get the pattern. Of course it is. Demand is rising on these plants very, very quickly as we speak. And of course, they're very pretty to look at. Plus, I honestly think this plant gets bonus points for not looking like a typical Syngonium. It looks a lot different. Sometimes it can look a bit like an Anthurium. Sometimes it can look a little bit like a Philodendron. It's a bit unique in that sense, so I think it might just take off. Next on the list, we have the Monstera Burley Marks Flame. Now, I can't really tip this up very much because it is in a self-warring pot and it's in pawn at the minute. So if I tip this up, all of this is going to fall out. But basically, this is a small one. As you can see, I've had it grown from quite a while. I actually bought this as a one-leafed cutting back in 2020, I believe. I think I picked it up from Belgium. Really, really happy that I've got it. Obviously, I will get into the specifics on it in just a moment, but I'm going to say it twice in this video this grows very slow. I have cut from it a couple of times. I think there is a cut here, but you might not be able to see it. I don't think there is a cut here. You can probably tell here it's come from a tiny little chunk. If you want anxiety, definitely buy a one leaf chunk like that. It's not ideal. But yeah, this one's grown okay. Just very slow. It's the best thing I can say about it. There you are. Beautiful plant. Very, very beautiful plant. Uh, this was on my wish list for a long time as well, actually. I think it was about, what, a couple of years for that too? Took me a while to find this one. Definitely. This plant has often been referred to as Monstera dilacerata. I'm unsure if it is. All I know at the moment is that it is going as Monstera burley marks flame. So if you're looking for this plant, start there. I think you'll find what you're looking for. So the price on a Burley Marks Flame is low for figures, very similar to the other entries in this list. Of course, prices vary, as with anything, but that's generally what you're going to find it for. As for availability, they are a little bit more available than what they were last year, I will say that. There's been no massive takeover or no market flooding or anything like that, but they are becoming a little bit more available. Now, as for the ease or success of propagation, I would not, not be doing my job if I didn't tell you how slow these things grow. Don't get me wrong, I've cut mine a couple of times, but even then, it still hasn't sized up very well. As you can probably see from my footage, it is very, very slow. This plant is the slowest grower on this list by far. Time between propagation, therefore, is around about six months plus. You might be waiting a while if you want to propagate this one. Ease of care, honestly, I would say it is pretty easy. I wouldn't note anything negative here other than how slow these plants grow. In every other way, I would say they were easy once established. Plus, they can handle being fed a little bit less. They stay a little bit darker if you starve them a little bit, which always helps. As for the market trend, they are becoming both more affordable and more available. So I would say they're on a super, super, super like snail paced, steady upwards trend. And I think they're worth investing in because the rate of growth for these plants, obviously being really slow, it's probably matched by the rate of upwards trend for the plant. So I would say they're worth it. I don't figure that you would lose much money on these. The next plant I have to talk to you about today is the variegated philodendron micans. Now, you'll either care or not care with this plant, and I think that's due to the fact that the regular micans is circulated pretty much everywhere. I did feature that plant in an affordable aroids video, which I will link down below if you are interested, or you can find it on my channel, of course. So it depends whether you care or not, but at the minute, they are definitely on the up, which is quite cool, to be honest. They look really nice as well, and what I will say is there seems to be a a couple of different versions of this plant out there. There are some that are variegated on the margin. There are some that look more pinky white variegation. There are some that are yellow variegated. So it depends what you want to go for, to be honest. You have a few different options there. But let's get right into the specifics. 
So for a derogated philodendron congo, you are probably paying low four figures. A single leaf with good variegation might set you back between one and two thousand dollars. Again, obviously dependent on variegation levels. Availability, very low availability on these, so be attentive if you're searching for one. I don't suspect the listings would stay around for very long at all. Ease of success of propagation, I would say very easy. I've never even had a propagation fail on these. They can be tricky to cut due to how they grow. So perhaps get in there with a scalpel and not attempt it with scissors or anything like that. And as always, try and get an area root to start you off if you can. Time between propagation, honestly, probably around four to six months. From my experience, they aren't as fast as some of the other plants on this list. That could just be the root system on my mother plant though. So take that with a pinch of salt. Ease of care, honestly, very easy care. This probably comes from the fact that the green Congo has been mass produced and it's hard as nails. I also find that this plant isn't very feed hungry, basically meaning if you don't feed it for a while, will it stay in lovely and dark green? Yes, probably. The market trend for this plant is, of course, again, 100% on the up. I think they just look really, really good, these plants. That's that's what's doing most of it, to be honest. They look lovely. The variegation on this plant is so striking as well. It's gorgeous. Is it worth investing? Of course it is. Though it is not a climbing plant, it is still not too much of a challenge to start producing propagations of this plant for sale. Again, depending on variegation. So the next plant I'm showing you a picture of from my shop because I've since chopped it and it's not looking its best and I didn't bring it today. So the next plant I'd like to talk to you about is the Philodendron Green Congo Variegated or Variegata. Now this plant, oh my god, I hope the picture does it justice. I think it will. This is a very, very beautiful plant. Not to mention the Green Congo, just the Green Congo, is mass produced. It can be found nearly anywhere. It's a very, very tough plant. And I think these plants just look so gorgeous and impressive. They really, really are one to watch out for. I think these plants are absolutely lovely. They're not very easy to find though. Obviously, again, we'll get into it, but I had to show you because it's so gorgeous. And I do think this is a very desirable plant right now as well. So for a variegated philodendron congo, you are probably paying low four figures. A single leaf with good variegation might set you back between one and two thousand dollars. Again, obviously dependent on variegation levels. Availability, very low availability on these, so be attentive if you're searching for one. I don't suspect the listings would stay around for very long at all. Ease of success of propagation, I would say very easy. I've never even had a propagation fail on these. They can be tricky to cut due to how they grow. So perhaps get in there with a scalpel and not attempt it with scissors or anything like that. And as always, try and get an area root to start you off if you can. Time between propagation, honestly, probably around four to six months. From my experience, they aren't as fast as some of the other plants on this list. That could just be the root system on my mother plant though. So take that with a pinch of salt. Ease of care, honestly, very easy care. This probably comes from the fact that the green Congo has been mass produced and it's hard as nails. I also find that this plant isn't very feed hungry, basically meaning if you don't feed it for a while, will it stay in lovely and dark green? Yes, probably. The market trend for this plant is, of course, again, 100% on the up. I think they just look really, really good, these plants. That's, that's what's doing most of it, to be honest. They look lovely. The variegation on this plant is so striking as well. It's gorgeous. Is it worth investing? Of course it is. Though it is not a climbing plant, it is still not too much of a challenge to start producing propagations of this plant for sale. Again, depending on variegation. The next plant I have to talk to you about today is the Philodendron Red Moon. Now then, this plant's pretty cool. You might be able to see why in the center there. So this plant is very special because new leaves emerge kind of like this color here. They can go from yellow to orange to red when they emerge. You might be able to tell here, this plant has come in with a full red leaf and it is still in the process of hardening down. So basically, this plant starts with this color. It will then turn into this sort of color when it fades. And I believe there is, yes, there is. There's a little bit on the back of this plant here where there is still some color. I don't think you can see it on the front of the leaf, actually. It's more just the back. 
you can sort of see a little something something. I apologize, it's not wanting to focus very much today at all. So that's basically the story with this plant. Now, this plant is stable, so it's always going to do this. This plant is reasonably desirable right now. Again, if you can see that leaf in the middle, you might be able to see why. Very, very, very nice plant. And I think this plant's got good life in it yet. This is really one of my favorites and another plant that was on my wish list for ages as it happens. Now this is where things get a little bit rosier. So the price for the red moon is round about 1,000 for a small plant. But with this one, you do have an opportunity to get a whole plant rather than just a leaf. So please bear that in mind. I know it's a lot, but you get more for your money when you buy this plant. As for the availability, there are certainly more available than a lot of other plants on this list, which is probably reflected in the size of the plants on offer, if that makes sense. But it's still not super available. It's definitely in the very rare category. Ease of successor propagation, unbelievably easy to chop and prop, no worries there at all. Time between propagations, I would say around about four months. Top cuttings, as you might be able to imagine, grow very quickly, but one leaf cuttings really don't. Not the worst on this list, but there have been quicker proppers that we've covered. Ease of care, again, very easy care, but as with the whip away, make sure you've got plenty of light on these plants to ensure you keep getting those beautiful, strong colors come through. They do tend to like a little bit more feed as well, these plants. The market trend, as you might expect, is on the up, but it's not as quick as other entries on this list. I don't think it's making the rounds quite as fast as some of the other plants. Popularity is certainly increasing, just not at a super fast rate. Is it worth investing? Of course it is. As with the other plants, such as the Whipple Way we covered earlier, there isn't a risk of losing any variegation because those beautiful red colours are part of the plant. You will never, ever lose it. All is good. So if you do not want to gamble with variegation, consider this one an option. The next plant on my list today is the Thormatophyllum African Fantasy Variegata, also known, I do believe, as the Thormatophyllum Angela. I think it's Angela. I think that's about right. Either way, if you're looking for it on the internet, you should be able to find it. And these are lovely. So quick backstory. I have wanted one of these for a while. It's not really a wishlist plant, but I am sort of looking for it. I did own the green version for some time. I've mentioned this before as well. My parents have it at the moment and it is thriving. It's looking beautiful. So I haven't seen a variegated plant in person. Obviously, I'm showing you images now, but I'm pretty sure it'd be a showstopper. I'm not gonna lie, it looks really, really pretty and I would be very interested in getting one for myself or even to sell in the shop. So full transparency, I'm probably looking for this plant as well. I think it's absolutely stunning. I would love to see one in person. I don't think I ever will until I bought one, but I would love to see one in person. I think they're beautiful. So this makes my eyes water a little bit. The price for the Thormatophyllum African Fantasy or Angela, whichever you prefer, is around 5,000 for a small plant. Yikes. Not the most expensive plant on this list, but by no means is it the cheapest. Availability is reasonably low as they're a bit of a newcomer plant. Obviously, the price is keeping them less available as well. Ease or successor propagation. I've never propagated this plant or even the green version. So unfortunately, I cannot give you an answer for that. Same thing for, of course, time between propagations. Ease of care, speaking on the green version of the plant, which hopefully counts for something, they are tough as old boots, guys, and I mean tough. I can assume that the variegated version is perhaps a little bit slower to grow, but likely it is still very tough indeed. The market trend on these is on the up, but they are very new to the scene and they're still very expensive. So time will tell based on how many people decide to take the plunge on these plants and start to circulate them. I do think these plants are worth investing in though, guys. Given my knowledge of the regular Thormatophyllum, I don't see any major issues unless propagation on these turns out to be very difficult. Regardless, it's brand new on the market, it's variegated, and I can't imagine its life cycle being anything other than prosperous right now. The next plant is a classic, is it not? This is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. What is special about it, you ask? If you've never seen this plant before, I hope you're at least somewhat mesmerized. So this plant gets these beautiful shaped leaves like such. And of course, you get this beautiful variegation. Now, honestly, I would say that the variegation was between white 
and yellow. I would say it was a very creamy yellow, as probably evidenced by this. I realise it is sort of yellow variegation, but it never really comes off like that. It definitely comes off a lot lighter, a little bit like a banana milkshake sometimes. It's not full yellow. Obviously, newer leaves will come in yellow, but they do change. That's an all green leaf there for those that are interested. And this new very wobbly leaf, I mean, it is fine. It just looks a bit sad. This is how the leaves actually come in here. So they start like a lime greeny yellow, and then over time, they fade up to this. These are just beautiful plants. And honestly, I totally get why. Like, who wouldn't want that? I mean, the growth pattern might not be for everybody. This plant here has, what, five leaves? It will climb eventually as well, by the way. You are going to need to pull this but you don't have to. You could just keep a little plant like this and just keep cutting it when it gets bigger. It's such a cute little plant. I mean, look at this. Just look at this. That is so beautiful. I'm not surprised this is a favourite of most people, I think. I think there's a lot to like about this one. This is a very, very good seller, I would say. I'm pretty sure I featured this plant in one of last year's investment plant lists. So let's get into it real quick. So the price on a philodendron Florida beauty has held pretty strong from last year. It is still around about $500 for perhaps a four-leafed plant. Again, the price largely depends on variegation, but these rates are more or less the same as they were last year. Availability, they are reasonably available, I would say. One leaf cuttings are going to be a lot more available than full plants, but you shouldn't struggle to find one. Ease of successor propagation, I've mentioned this several times before, they are fine and you will have minimal loss if you propagate with aerial roots. I know I say that all the time, I know I'm a broken record, but similar to the El Choco Red, I would not advise you to propagate these plants without an aerial. Time between propagation, maybe a little bit longer, maybe four to five months. It genuinely depends on the plant. I've had some quick, I've had some really slow. It depends. It depends on the status of the aerial roots as well. Ease of care, honestly, as long as you make sure you don't burn those leaves, I would say it's pretty easy. Make sure that you keep a reasonable amount of light on these plants, just so that when that yellow variegation comes through and it comes through sort of greeny, it does harden off properly to that beautiful creamy yellow. The market trend on these plants, honestly, as you might be able to tell, it is exactly the same. And I am surprised. I thought it might go down and it just hasn't. That really does surprise me. So, you probably know what's coming. Yes, I think you should invest in them because they are stable and that's a great thing, especially if you're a bit more worried about taking the gamble. These are stable in terms of their market. As long as you get decent stock with good variegation, you get your aerial roots, I see no issues making some cash on this plant. And that concludes my video on some of the houseplants I think are a good idea to invest in. Now, a lot of those cost a lot of money, I'm not going to lie. If you want a video on perhaps some more lower end affordable houseplants, so maybe something that costs very low three digits, maybe I can make one of those for you. So if you'd like to request that, feel free to leave that down below. And as always, you do not have to buy a houseplant to invest in. You can buy a plant because you like it and don't let anyone shame you either way or the other. The important thing is to have fun, buy what you like, and do what makes you happy. Please do not feel pressured to do anything you don't want to do. And as always, do not go beyond your means. It's not worth it. Look after yourself. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you'd like to see any more of my content and you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you could. Please leave a like on this video to let me know that I've done a decent job of producing it anyway. And for the rest of you, I will see you next week. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.